Welcome to this Mastery Empowerment Course from New Earth One Network. This is designed exclusively for your higher self connection and embodiment. Welcome to this Mastery Empowerment course. We are here with Gaetana and Yantal, a beautiful sacred couple who is here on a mission to assist us in the ascension process on planet Earth. And this is Sacred Temple of the Heart Practitioner Introduction Course. And we've been experiencing the Sacred Temples of the Heart, and this is allowing us to take it one step further. Gaetana, thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Thank you, Lauren. We are so excited to be sharing this new training program with your community. Let's start by having you give an overview of the importance of this work. It is very high frequency. And when we're talking about anchoring in the heart, this is developing many aspects of the heart, heart-based living. So give us an overview of that, if you would, to start. Yes, thank you. So the relevance of this work for 2023 is that we received the vision that next year, everything will become real. That means it's the year of the Christ in action. That's the message we received. What this means is uh, we're not talking about action uh, as, as masculine action, like being hyperactive of doing lots of things. But the Christian action means that we will be externalizing the light that we have cultivated. We'll be externalizing our divine blueprint, not only for life, but for service. And we have been sharing these chambers of the Sacred Heart light attunements with your community uh, from July this year uh, through December. And the energy has been amping up. <laughs> so we, did, we were guided to offer this as a training program. And we've been receiving transmissions from uh, a few of the ascended masters that constitute the Holy Family. That's how they presented to us, which is uh, the Lady of Mercy, which is one of the multidimensional representations of Mother Mary. We know that the Virgin Mary has many uh, forms of expressing herself and because we are in the Dominican Republic and we have a big mission here uh, the the patron of this uh, land is the Lady of Mercy and we receive transmissions from her and then from Lady Nara uh, and uh, Master Sananda Lord Sananda so the three of them have been guiding us to share uh, these light attunements and go to the sacred temple of the heart in 2023, because there are many, many reasons for that. Uh, to begin with, we are being called collectively to step into our service roles or to up-level upgrade those roles. Uh, and we will talk about this later. Uh, then, because the focus is to also upgrade our relationships, to be embodying the 5D relationship matrix. And for that, we need uh, heart mastery, which is another uh, of the visions for this uh, new year, that we attain heart mastery. So it's not only connecting to the heart and following intuition and acting accordingly, but really mastering the frequency of the heart, also as a technology that can help us clear the lower bodies, uh, step out from the from the mind, from the conditioning of the mind, and really making wise decisions and being totally grounded in our purpose and mission. 
And also uh, the fourth purpose is to uh, open collectively a lighter path of ascension. Many light beings are very identified with a hard path. <laughs> and the lighter path means that we can live and serve from what we call karuna consciousness. Karuna means deep compassion, which means contemplating what we have to contemplate, addressing the issues that we have to address, healing, but in a way, very compassionate and loving way, in a very mature way, I would say. So we've been uh, hearing many participants in the chambers in your community say that they are already in service, but they are maybe more involved with more physical ways of serving, like massage or yoga or uh, martial arts even, or, or energy healing, energy modalities, but they are taking away a lot of energy from them. And so we were guided to share these teachings so that we really allow source energy to be creating the transformation, the shift in the collective. And we felt many light, uh, light workers saying, I'm really tired. This is consuming a lot of my energy. Uh, processes are very slow. Or then I, I get attached to, to the energy of the participants. This one lady saying, for example, that I have a session and we shift energy. But then I go and eat a lot of, of junk food even because I, I can't hold the frequencies and it's so deep what happened, but I cannot really shift that inside of me. So we've been listening to the collective say we need higher forms of service so that we can co-create with divinity, but we are not doing the work. We, the human aspect of us, right? And so this uh, trinity of the Holy Family is the team of Ascended Masters that we will be overlapping next year and this training uh, program for the practitioners. And so the Lady of Mercy holds the frequency of the liberator. She will be helping us liberate very deep trauma, wounds, things that we are not even aware of that we are still carrying, but in a very compassionate way, again, in a light way. Then Lady Nara, uh, she holds the frequency of the restorer. She will be helping us reconcile with our past, with our past and present decisions, with our choices. And then uh, Lord Sananda or Master Jesus holds the frequency of the Redeemer. So it's really forgiving, redeeming those places of uh, self-punishment, self-criticism, uh, heavy burdens that we carry within. So the three of them come to uh, open a new path of enlightenment for all of us. And the, the stronger message that they gave us is service is a requirement of ascension. It's no longer a privilege. It's no longer something that you can decide to do or not to do or to delay stepping into. Really, if we really um, get this vision and this deep message that if we really want to ascend, if we really want to expand consciousness, if we really want to reconvert and move towards soul completion, service is a requirement. There's no other way of truly shifting from the victim consciousness to the creator consciousness. It involves service. And we have to get trained in this. It's not something that just magically awakens. We have to show up every day. We have to train with other leaders, Aquarian leaders. We have to be in an appropriate field for this to happen. There's so many clearings, that so much purification that needs to take place because holding a high vibrational frequency is not easy. It seems like we write the intention on paper, you know, and that's it. <laughs> and we made it a little bit here and there, but it requires really a light network to to be able to manifest this. So as we are moving in 2023 towards a frequency of divine service, I wanna really clarify that uh, Christic service or divine service is not a bunch of new tools that we add to the toolkit. It's a state of consciousness. It's an embodied state of consciousness. So we have to become it. 
not talk about it or or just have the tools for it, but we have we we require time, energy, uh, and and a lot of support to really embody this uh, this frequency. So, shall I step into what divine service is and what we are getting aligned with for next year, or do you have any other question before that? I just want to say this resonates so deeply with many things that you said, um, stepping into the source roles and um, bringing in a higher form of service is really what we've picked up on with the light workers that we're in communication with as well. There's a feeling of a need for up leveling. There's a feeling of doing something differently, but it's it's very vague. Yeah. It may not be easy to identify that level of service, but it is something yeah. new. And it's also very interesting that you mentioned that this is all happening in this 2023 year, which numerology wise is a seven year, which is a very spiritual year. So I find that fascinating. And what would you think about people downloading or interpreting their service work? One that is easier, one that is lighter, and maybe not so physical like the massage therapist yeah. and, and whatever. Um, we tend to get in the head when we think of that, but that's yes. not what we're here to do. We have to really be heart based when we do that. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thanks for confirming this need in the spiritual community. What better than the Holy Family, this Trinity of Ascended Masters to guide us in the process. We're already being activated ourselves and receiving the initiations, the mantras, all the tools uh, and the vibration, really. And so for us, it's very concrete. So thank you for mentioning that because we can maybe uh, define what this divine calling is all about. So what is divine service in 2023 and beyond? We will call it Aquarian leadership. Yes, we, we, we want to bring in the energy of Aquarius because it's what we are moving into collectively. And so to be a divine server in this enlightened age, golden age, age of Aquarius, the first thing is that we as Aquarian leaders need to become visible. And we heard so many people say, I'm okay with being anonymous. I'm okay with doing this, uh, like hiding a little bit. <laughs> um, but the, the sign, I would say, of an Aquarian leader is visibility. We have to show up, we have to step up, we have to be out there. It's no longer the timeline when we are in the cave <laughs> or isolated. There have been timelines of service where we served in an anonymous way. Anonymity has served a purpose. Yes, it protected us from many things and we had to serve in that way, but not anymore. We are really saying that we need legions of light to uh, revert the planetary consciousness. And we hear people say, I'm afraid. I'm not sure, it's not safe. Yes, yeah, so visibility is something we will work a lot on internally. For some people, even getting on a camera. And it, it's not that you have to step into big platforms or anything, but it means being out there, you know, showing up every day for service, for life and for service. And also because another big shift in this age of Aquarius is that we are no longer helping people just for an individual session or just for an energy healing one day or a conversation one day about what's possible. We are supporting processes. We are supporting whole journeys. And so this requires a vision. It is just, I know this healing modality, I have this set of tools that I apply with this person and on a daily basis we say, okay, what's, what's, in, what's up for you today? We need to have a vision of where we are moving towards with this healing and all the activations. Um, and of course we require the technology 
to, to manifest that, okay? So there's a big difference between having one-on-one -on -one sessions, for example, with someone, just exploring what's in for the day to support journeys, stewarding the individual collective consciousness somewhere. <laughs> So that requires vision, purpose, mission, technology, community. Uh, it's something totally different. And it means that we hold a frequency where we can respond to that collective movement. We have to have the energy to support people continually. And that requires training, yes. Um, also another fear, uh, with this type of divine service is that it's a type of invitation, divine invitation to serve from a place of what we don't know rather than what we have been trained in. I wanna clarify this a little bit further. Um, when you get a job uh, in, in regular, like a regular job, yes, in, in the matrix, <laughs> you are hired for something that you know how to do, you have the degree, the certificate, you've been to university, you can prove that you have the competencies and skills to respond to that, right? And that feels very safe. But divinity, the ascended masters always tell us, we are all about uh, exploring potential. So if someone hires you for what you already know, what's the benefit in that? What's the blessing? <laughs> you would be repeating and recreating the same patterns over and over. So divine service means that you will be summoned from within to do something that you don't know yet, that you have to develop, that you have to awaken within. So you have to kind of live at, at the edge of consciousness all the time. And this may feel very uncomfortable because we need to be in control all the time. And this is about expanding potential, being in the present moment, receiving guidance, stepping into the unknown, fully surrendering to what is needed from on high, <laughs> rather than saying, I know this, I stick to this, this is all I know, don't ask me anything different. So this is a big shift for many people. And for many uh, employers or for many people starting a service, like I need people to know what they are doing. Would you hire someone for something they don't know yet? It's risky, right? But that's where development happens. That's where evolution happens. And we need to be evolving and stretching limits all the time. And really not having to know in advance, but holding that abstract state of consciousness where we can surrender to this now moment and we can listen to whatever is needed in this right moment. Yes? So that requires a lot of training actually. Then this requires also balanced service. We, we know that we have been living and serving more from the masculine principles or archetype. And there's a lot of conversations around the divine feminine, which yes, of course, we are more focused on the divine feminine because it's what has been suppressed, but it's really both. I wanna really mention it's the divine feminine and the divine masculine. I love the divine masculine in all of us. We need both, we need both in balance. As the divine goddess, the, the inner goddess awakens, it will be balancing also the masculine principle within us, but we need both. We need the vision and the capacity to precipitate and manifest higher realities. So that inner community, uh, communion, that inner balance, that holy matrimony between the divine feminine and masculine needs to happen. It's a divine union within. It's the only grounded way to serve from now on. So that needs to be really balanced. And the other thing, of course, is that in order to step into your divine service role, uh, we need to develop a direct connection to source. We need to take full responsibility for our decisions. Even if your role is one that is more connected to leadership and you are following guidance from others or co-creating with others. But even if that's your decision, you need to know that that's coming from source. You are totally aligned with that vision, movement, cause or project. 
And it's not something outside of yourself saying you have to do this. Many people, we say there are two paths opening, the path of leadership and the path of mastery, which is not exactly the same. Leadership means that you still need someone to guide you, but you know it's not outside of yourself. It's not being imposed on you. It's not an external source saying you have to do this. It's someone helping you translate your inner guidance. Yes, but you still have to know that that is, that is guided from source and that you may need others to clarify that message or path for you and you can co-create in that way. But there's no longer the projection that you are making me do this. Yes, or I don't feel this, but, but it's your idea. No, we, so, some of us are just translating the collective intention or the individual collection um, intention for people. But you have to take 100% responsibility that everything that you're choosing, even to be guided by others, it's your choice ultimately. So it requires zero projection or moving towards that <laughs> and 100% responsibility. That accelerates really service. And, and the path for everybody. Thank you so much for this. It really is so inspiring as we hear you motivate us in this way. And again, I just have to say, we're all feeling it. Um, the visibility thing is very interesting, coming from not knowing, showing up and not knowing, but trusting in the process. It really does help explain what I've heard from people and even what I'm going through, and it gives us a boldness in doing it. And so you say that it requires a lot of training, a lot of training to respond to this movement of vision, purpose, community, mission. And the training is really for us to develop that direct connection with source. Absolutely. And to trust it. And to trust it, to surrender to this now moment, and also to exercise deep listening. Mm. Because we hear many people say, when they say, I know what my purpose is, or I'm receiving inner guidance, or I have to respect my timing, it's all coming from the head, really. It's all protection mechanisms. It's not really it. So when we are in the right container, and we feel safe listening to our destiny, to our purpose, to our mission, to this higher calling. And, and we have other people helping us confirm that that's the, the right choice, the right direction. Uh, and we can step out from the mind control saying, oh, I heard this, but it's, it's fear really. It's fear that's protecting people from stepping into the role they have to be stepping into, yes. Uh, and there's a lot of, of people saying, I have to respect my own time, for example, right? But that is not coming really from acceptance and surrender. It's I, I'm buying more time for ego. It's I'm isolating myself. I'm deviating from the path. Again, I'm stepping out of the community because I feel in control when I'm by myself. Of course, because nobody mirrors anything to you. If you're alone in your home, you can just tell yourself whatever you like, because there are own mirrors, you know? Nobody would be reminding you of your sacred intentions. Like a month ago, you said this and that. Are you showing up to that? If you're alone, of course, it feels safe, but really it's controlled, it's fear-based. And really we need to open our heart to other people. We need to open heart to community because it's the light network. You're making sure when you're surrounded by the ascended masters and other light beings that you won't compromise. And it's so easy to compromise. Yes, so easy. But once you have set your intention and, and, and your team, your community knows that, you cannot lie to yourself anymore. You have to show up. You have to find a divine solution. You have to co-create a solution with somebody. Yes. So actually being in community is a loving choice. And the, the Holy Family is also downloading all the templates for the, uh, for the 5D families. 
meaning light families that are really connected uh, by purpose, by a mission, like really like the Holy Family, like the one that you know, uh, Jesus, Mother Mary, um, they were not connected because of attachment or, or human love. There was something stronger connecting them, which was mission, something sacred to be done here. When you can connect with somebody, light family, light community, from that place, that's unshakable, unbreakable, indestructible. All the other human relationships, because they are based on external things or on image or on structures, indoctrination, they fall apart. And if the only thing that is keeping you with somebody is, is blood family, that's not enough. There has to be a stronger bond there. Yes. So this is becoming very, very important that we attract, we magnetize, and we create relationships that are having this bond based on service and purpose. That makes you really powerful. Yes, and I can hear the question from so many, including myself, my higher self, or I'm asking this, <laughs> my higher self, is how do we begin to find that community? How do we attract and magnetize that community to us? I know that this is the mind thinking again. So what would your advice be for that? Yeah. So again, it's about embodiment. Basically, what I would say is that the Holy Family and all the training that we will give in January, February 2023 to get started, what they will help a lot with is to dissolve codependent relationships and form of service. Really, to be honest and authentic, most services are very codependent. They're based on pity. They're based on solving things for others, tolerating things that are un intolerable or untolerable. I don't know the English word. Um, just because we, we have been so abused and we have taken so many things for granted that we say, okay, I have to tolerate this. You know, I have to serve just anybody, even if, if their behavior is not appropriate. So we make a, a lot, we make up a lot of excuses to tolerate behavior that is not appropriate. Yes, that doesn't mean that we can't hold the space for people to purge and to clear. But it's very important to understand that divine service is not a therapeutic space. It's not therapy. It's not a space where people go and purge their emotions, they project freely, and, and they don't take responsibility for that. But yes, it's a space of, of divine alchemy, a space of sacred healing, where we all take responsibility for whatever needs to be cleared or whatever needs to be upgraded. But we are all showing up for that collectively. We have the will to be healing from the inside out. And yes, we can co-create the healing with others, but I can't expect others to take my burdens for me. Yes. So that's why people in service, they feel so drained sometimes because to a certain extent, that form of service is codependent. And we don't, we don't notice that so obviously because we got used to those relationships. And we even justify those things by saying, well, this is, this is not so bad, you know, I can deal with this, I can cope with this. How can you tell? You get really tired. You start having physical symptoms. In general, the spine uh, gets really very, very tired. You, like the, the body elemental will start telling you that the elements within will say, this is enough. We have to move on. We have to embody another frequency. And so for all the light workers that are kind of pushing people or pushing their services because they're afraid to let go of certain people who represent certain programs or levels of consciousness, surrender there's something lighter coming for you if those people want to evolve with you that's okay and you can offer service and assistance but if they are not willing 
if they are holding on to fear-based programs and they don't want to change and they just want to project, it's okay to let go. It's okay. Yes, we have this mantra, love all, serve all. But that doesn't mean serve just anybody. Love all, serve all the souls that are willing to evolve. And if you feel that somebody or many people in your field are just saying no to evolution because they need other experiences and it's okay, you have the permission to move on. So I would say that also to identify what your highest calling is, is get, I mean, like be totally honest and authentic, right, with yourself. What frequencies do I want to be? reactivating in the collective consciousness? What type of service do I deserve? What type of people do I deserve to co-create with? Instead of dragging people or being dragged by other people, you know, it's like really translate your frequency in this now moment and give yourself permission to say, okay, this is where I'm coming from. This is what I believe in. This is what I deserve and nothing less than that than this, okay? Once you set that intention, that if I can hold this frequency, I deserve people in the same frequency or bandwidth of frequencies, uh, you are giving yourself permission to reorganize your reality from your highest vibration without feeling that you're abandoning anybody, letting anybody down. You always offer. But deep listening also helps you recognize if someone is saying yes or no. And we work a lot with the Elohim because we work with the Ascended Masters. And the first Elohim that starts the process of manifestation is the Elohim of will. And that Elohim is always telling us, you can't help someone that doesn't want to receive help. If someone is not willing to help, just let go. It will drain you, it will drain your community, it will drain everybody. It's a red flag. So always check, are you willing? But not just in words, like, are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to show up? Are you willing to heal this? Are you willing to go really deep? Are you willing to co-create heaven on earth? Yes or no? And we have to become very responsible for relationships because otherwise, like our life, our mission is at stake. So we don't have the luxury of codependency anymore. <laughs> we need to become sovereign, we need to be authentic, and we need, to, it's up to us to decide what do we deserve. It's up to us. And that goes hand in hand with a certain level of worthiness, self-worth, where you can accept that without fear, shame, or guilt, and saying, oh my God, I really deserve the best. I really deserve willing people around me. I really deserve people who want to manifest this earthly mission with me. I don't want any distractions. I don't want any excuses. And the masters tell us now that there are three levels of contribution that are necessary right now. The first level of contribution is people give you their time. So they listen to YouTube, they read a book, they do an activation, they have a free session or something. They give you time. That's the easiest thing to give for a human being. Second level of contribution is money. They understand that they have to uh, invest in themselves and in the process. So now it's time and money resources. And many people think that because they pay, they resolve. And many people say, but I show up and I, I pay for the course, for example, but things are not shifting. Okay, third level of contribution, and it's all of them. Third level is your consciousness. What you have to offer is your consciousness, your inner shift. If you just give, you show up and you pay for something, that won't resolve much. You have to be willing to reconvert. What divinity is asking from us is give me 
your lack mentality so that it can shift your consciousness. That is a level of surrender. Giving time and money is not so hard, even if, if it's the universal excuse for people not to take responsibility. You know, that people say, I don't have time, I don't have money. But really, those are the basic forms of contribution. It's like minimum, right? Like the same in your family. Like if you're living with your husband or, or wife, okay, you spend time together and you share resources to support the household, right? That's basic. What creates the true shift? Consciousness. I really change. I really transform. I really surrender. I really become the Christ. So that's the level, that's the level of contribution that we require for divine service. Of course, time, it's a no-brainer. Of course, money and resources, of course, and consciousness. We need to change, we need to mature. So spiritual maturity would be the third level of contribution. And that's where the magic, the miracle happens. We can feel a shift happening right now as we listen to your words. And I think we can all look in our lives and say, wow, we get it now. And so there is work to do yeah. and responsibility to take. Yeah. And it really is beautiful. You mentioned deep listening. Wow. Do you have a protocol for deep listening or tools that we could use to understand that voice within? Do you find that that is a challenge for people to really tune in in that way, to decide, mm -hmm. discern between the ego and the higher self, the voice of the higher self or the team of light, our guides? Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> it's safe to be in the head because you're in control. You have your own agenda and you think I'm listening and you're just controlling life, right? So we, we always um, invoke a circle of ascended masters. They are eight is in all the directions. And we always start our day in that way. And in our, of our trainings, we do that. But I would say that to get started, the best ascended master to start establishing a relationship with is Master El Moria. So you can visualize Master El Moria, a blue ray. Master El Moria represents divine will and so to make sure that what you're listening within is not coming from ego from fear from control from manipulation from comfort but it's coming really from this deep calling from within you can either invoke master El moria you would just say master El moria please come to my field or you can visualize a blue ray of light when we invoke a blue ray, it just comes through the crown chakra, goes down the pillar of light, and we anchor that on the crystalline core of the earth so that we receive the whole transmission within. And or you can use his mantra, thy will, not mine, be done. So this in, in practical terms would mean, suppose you go into meditation or you have to make a decision, you are not clear around what's the best choice for you. So you just sit there for five minutes in your private place. You invoke El Moria, the blue ray of light, and say, whatever I'm thinking, I just want to make sure it's aligned with the divine will. So I'll just chant this mantra. Thy will, not mine, be done. Thy will, not mine, be done. What that mantra will do is to clear all the fear, to clear fear to take responsibility for your most abundant uh, reality and making sure that as you repeat that mantra on a daily basis, you can, you can go through all the layers of mental activity and mental thoughts till you find that place where you can surrender to the divine will and say, okay, I really want my will to coincide with the divine will. It's, 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 it's a form of prayer, that mantra, saying, please, God, please, El Moria, don't allow my small self to make any decision. Please help me. So thy will not mine be done. 
I want to clarify, what are we saying when we say that? I'm not saying thy will, El Moria's will. What El Moria is saying is, this has been my mantra of ascension. I'm just sharing what I did to ascend. What you are saying is saying, by it's the will of your higher self. It's El Moria's mantra, but you're not saying the will of El Moria. Thy will not mine be done. He said, this is what I practice to ascend. So if you do the same and you use my mantra, you are saying, please hire yourself, take over. Even if I'm afraid to surrender everything to my higher self, please take command of my field. Please don't make me make the decision, me the small self. So maybe I don't know what the decision is, but I have the free will, the choice to say, I trust my higher self. I'm handing this over to my higher self. I don't need to know what that is. I don't need to control the process. What The only thing, the ascended masters tell us, see how in human relationships, in order for someone to accept you, they require so many things of you, like you have to be uh, blonde or a brunette or thin or tall or have these uh, competencies or skills. The ascended masters say, I only require your will. Isn't that loving? Is the only thing they ask of us. Just be willing to co-create. Just be willing to become authentic. Just be willing to receive service from us. Just be willing to do this mantra and we'll show you the way. They just ask for our will. It's so little. So little. So this would be the starting point. El Moria, it's a lovely master about discipline, divine will. He will help you order your life and, and have the platform to start ascending and build up your disciplines. And with this mantra, you make sure that as you chant this on a daily basis, your higher self gradually will be taking, uh, making all the decisions for you. Again, that resonates so deeply. And um, I won't share um, some personal things going on, but I actually received a very similar transmission and you have just confirmed it. And I know others listening to this are feeling it as well. It really is quite beautiful and very empowering. And I think we're ready. I think many people are indeed ready yes. for this next level up. And yes. so thank you for sharing um, that your course it's a two-month course to work and support our community in this way is starting soon and we're inviting everyone to join tell us a little bit more about that and some of what we're going to learn and cover in that training. Yes. so we will be meeting live and we will be recording the group sessions the fourth saturdays of and the fourth saturdays of um, February 2023, it's eight sessions. They will be recorded for those who kind of join uh, live. And the vision is to uh, magnetize uh, many Aquarian leaders who are wanting to up-level their form of service or get started. Many people say, I don't know how to get started. It's my first time serving and I want to make sure I do it from this frequency. And so we will be um, receiving mantras and very specific tools from the Holy Family and other Ascended Masters, but mainly them. They will give us forms of divine alchemy so that we go very deep, but in a light way, we can shift, transmute and alchemize energy in a very soft way by taking full responsibility. And it's amazing how you we are shown the programs and you can delete them or transcend them in just a, a few moments if you're very trained in this. Uh, without suffering, without crisis, without punishing yourself, without saying, oh, why have I made this decision in the past? It's not about that. It's pure, compassionate frequencies, very loving, very mature. And so we will be uh, going with these Ascended Masters into six chambers of the heart. It's actual spaces in the heart, in the, the portal of the heart so that we can master those, those frequencies. And we have been doing this with part of your community, uh, July through December this year. 
but this will be going to the chambers uh, to help guide others in that process. So once you are uh, trained in the chambers of the heart, it's six initial chambers, it's uh, divine awareness, divine responsibility, divine service, divine evolution, divine neutrality, and divine health. It's just to get started to move all your frequency to the 5D really. And so then once you receive your own initiations in the chambers at a deeper level, you will know how to guide others in that journey. So for example, you could uh, design a form of service where you uh, suggest six group sessions with people, a month and a half, yes, where you go every week in a chamber and we have combined, we have a, um, an ebook that we have uh, downloaded for people to have the support material, supplementary material, so that you have the guidance of, okay, how to go into the chamber, how to do certain sacred breaths before that and attunements. Then you go into the chamber, it's totally guided. There's a message from a priest and a priestess in the chamber. So you can just read that, share that with, the, with your community, with your participants and see what happens. So the beauty about this is that for people who are getting started or who are getting started in this divine frequency, Christ consciousness uh, form of service, it's the perfect combination between using your own creativity, your own gifts and, and all the tools that you have uh, embodied so far with a very guided and supported form of service where you have uh, the, the messages of the chambers, you have the transmissions, you have the audios, you have the ebook. So you can perfectly go into one session and say, for example, today we will go to the chamber of divine awareness to see what we have to become aware of, to heighten our uh, senses and to pay more attention to certain things. You just invoke the frequency, you go into the chamber, you read the message, you invoke the priest and the priestess, and you can take it from there. And you are making sure that source energy is shifting everything. You don't have to figure anything out. You don't, because people say like, I'm afraid that I won't be able to respond to, 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 to people when they ask something in service or that something shows up and I can deal with that situation. So there's a, a little bit of fear around, I don't know what to do, or people saying even, when you start offering service, it's a, such a broad spectrum of the things that you could be sharing and, and, and healing and dealing with. I don't know what to do in that container, right? So this is very guided if you need guidance and you can just stick to this and do it this way. And many things will start shifting spontaneously or combine these, create a safe container and we have mantras for the ascended masters and, and how to prepare the, the container for that. And then you can add your own skills and your own tools. So it's just for everybody, <laughs> yes? So this uh, chambers means that you go to the chamber of, for example, divine awareness. And it will take you, for example, beyond mindfulness. It's not just saying, okay, I know if I'm feeling a certain emotion or I'm aware of my surroundings. Really divine awareness is going deeper to be aware of your multidimensional consciousness, collective intentions, collective healing needs. So they go very deep. They, they clear and they activate your multidimensional consciousness, many, many layers, not only of the physical body, but of the energy body. They clear the lower bodies, they activate the heart. We are focusing on heart mastery with these chambers and making sure that when we are serving, we are not introducing more belief system or more attachment or more codependency. That we leave room for a source to work through us, uplift us collectively in very magical, miraculous ways, just because we show up and we are willing to mature spiritually and to move towards soul liberation. So beautiful, thank you. Uh, very exquisite, this work and this teachings, and it's really good for those who I want to say are searching for something, this is a high vibrational way that they can 
step into this level of service, align with source to do the service, to assist others in this way, to use the tools of media in this way, the tools yes, of yes. technology in this way. Yes. And we don't have to work so hard anymore as we really trust that source energy is working with us and doing the clearing and energy. And this, you know, for what this is, and the, all the information is here on this webpage, for what this is, it's a very affordable and highly valuable opportunity to step up and, and be given a structure in which to yes. do so from a very yes. high vibrational viewpoint. Yes. And you will be getting the ebook with all the transformations and the uh, and the background and, and all that you need to, to serve at this level. You will be getting six light attunements, audios and three audios with this, uh, all the weekly sessions and really really the contribution the, the price for this is is really affordable for a training program so it's not it's not certified we are not giving a, a, a certificate for this um but yes we are helping people uh, be trained in this uh this this higher frequency of service yes and um there was something else i wanted to mention that okay yes also there's the myth in the spiritual community that to start serving means I, I just know how to meditate and breathe and that's it. I'll take it from here. So we will be having also very mature conversations around the, the physical aspects of service, what you need to take in, into consideration. Of course, we, we won't be solving this for people, you know, but like you have to take care of service at so many levels. And some people say, I'll just share a meditation, that's it. Oh, no, no, there's so many things to consider. It's a very grounded form of service. Uh, you have to take into account the material resources, like bank accounts, you know, adult things that we have to consider. Uh, also, of course, the truth on the vibration and how to embody that and how there are many questions around, okay, when I, for example, take other people into the chamber, things happen. How do I deal with those situations maturely? Um, so really is understanding that service is the embodiment of Christ consciousness. It's not only I know how to breathe and medita meditate and that's it. That doesn't work anymore. It never worked anyway. So we have to awaken a certain vision. We, we'd say that either, either we uh, start our own movement because we have a cause, we have an earth earthly mission, or for most people, they have to join a movement, but you have to make a decision which one represents you, which one you want to be supporting. And so to co-create at that level, there's many things that have to be awakened and sustained within. So it's a very, very mature program, you know, to, to understand what we mean when we start a path of enlightenment, when we start serving others in that direction and all the things we have to consider uh, to manifest that, yes? And these are six initial chambers. They are 13 in all. This is level one, practitioner level one, but it's really the foundational practices, yes, to take service and life to this next level. So when someone completes this, they're able to go out in the world and begin being of service in this way. Well, Absolutely, we really want that. We hmm. will even leave a time between level one and level two so that people get initiated in the chambers and they start serving, they start offering. And it can be informally, maybe first it's with family and friends or one-on-one. -on -one. And then maybe you take it to groups of people, retreats, uh, we are just getting started, but we really want people to apply the teachings, to offer, to create their own form of service, and to get out there. That's mm. the real intention. It's not to have more tools, really. It's to inspire you. <laughs> the inspiration comes from within, but really to create the field where you feel supported and safe and valuable enough to offer something to others. And I think it's beautiful. I can see the many aspects of getting this out there and being of service. 
you did mention retreats and it could just be on a one-on-one -on -one retreat, right? Or Absolutely. Just a few people at a time or Absolutely. people can do their own webinars as they grow. They can go on radio shows. They can get out there. This is really where the light workers step up into the mainstream where light workers become the mainstream don't you think our world is ready for it i mean we're we're looking at the external collective and the seemingly chaos that's out there and the pressure cooker that it is it just seems like there will be that surrender to this sort of work this sort of yes. information to coming within so deeply and this is such a beautiful tool that people can use to get out there and begin doing this work so we really honor you for that thank you yeah we are so excited and we go back to the beginning where we said uh, service is a requirement of ascension it's no longer a luxury it's no longer i'll think about it you know no no, no we need this <laughs> Uh, it's the only way that we can really shift the planetary consciousness and we are already so it's a connection a combination of training and spontaneous awakenings of, of all the soul uh, wisdom that you carry as a light being uh, but we we need to um, we need also to heal all those programs that keep us hiding from others that make us not feel worthy that i don't have something to share i'm never prepared i'm never good enough to serve so there's a lot of clearing but it will be in a very very gentle way and already the people who have gone to the chambers and have received their initiations for themselves for self-healing they are uh, sharing that they are having deep transformation in very quick and deep ways without suffering without uh, criticizing themselves for the life choices they have made, mm -hmm. coming back to this now moment saying, okay, everything is happening in this now moment. I can recreate myself right now. I can erase a whole timeline or, or timelines of attachment and start anew. So it's, it's really, it's miraculous, I would say. <laughs> I, I, you know, just feeling into that, it feels like there's a clearing, just listening to your words, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, one question would be, do people need to participate in those earlier sacred chambers of the heart to do this training? Or do they get those recordings as part of this training? Yes, absolutely. So uh, with your platform and your Earth One, we have um, shared the initiations, the light attunements of these six initial chambers, and they have been recorded. So if you want to... Uh, purchase that program, what you will get is the live sessions every month, it's six in all, plus the light attunement, the MP3 audios. If you wanna get aligned before January, February, when we start this training program. Otherwise, that's an option. It's not compulsory, but it's an option. So you can go to Loren Gailey's uh, platform and you will see the Sacred Temple of the Heart Light Attunements. There are six in all, and you can purchase that. Or if you just join our program, we will give the uh, MP3 audios for the light attunements only, but not the live sessions. So if you want to have the light sessions just to go deeper with the chambers, I would recommend purchasing the, the previous program. Otherwise, we will just start from uh, in January, February. We will go over the chambers. You have the ebook and you have the light attunements, and you will start from there. Okay. So it's a good combination, but it's not compulsory, I would say. It's beautiful. Thank you. And uh, people who've gone through those, they have the opportunity to just do one solo. Yes. And yes, then yes. there were so many that came and, and got the rest of it because it's yeah, such yeah. a complete package. So what we're going to do is on this web page, we are going to be making that option available for right, those right. Um, six months along those those live webinars that we did that are recorded so yes, that'll yes. be on this page as I would say it's good preparation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but if you don't need the preparation and you're fully on board with the training program that's okay also beautiful this is quantum so <laughs> follow it's, your heart okay good 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 <laughs>
Is there anything else you'd like to add or offer for our class today? Yeah, so I would finish. I received a message from El Moria <laughs> before, uh, before this uh, transmission. So I would like to end in prayer, like uh, setting an intention for the collective for next year. So I would love to bring in El Moria's uh, blue ray of light and receive it in our hearts. So you can all visualize a blue ray going straight to the core of your heart. Connecting with divine will, your higher calling without excuses, without fear. And what El Moria has been sharing with us is that there's a big need to channel the collective energy towards the I am presence. So this is already happening right now. El Moria is very good to support us when we are a little bit rebellious around surrendering to this higher calling. So really understanding that we are moving beyond uh, soul awakening and soul empowerment. We are all entering collectively this true authentic path of enlightenment, of soul completion, soul liberation. It's not improving the personality, it's really awakening to who you are truly. And so you can start feeling your I am presence, your liberated you already exists now. And the blue ray will start surrounding your field, your consciousness, creating a vortex of light that will start spinning in both directions at the same time, clockwise, anti-clockwise, up-leveling your frequency, listening to your heart at a very deep level, knowing that that is the voice of greatness that is calling you to step up, to explore your highest opportunities, to trust that we, you are worthy of creating a miraculous life and you are supported by the Ascended Masters, by Father, Mother, God. And let's intend that our collective and individual resources, time, money, and consciousness, energy itself, are used to unite and not to divide, to cooperate and not to support egoic plans or hidden agendas. And may we consecrate our life force energy to support human planetary enlightenment. We are needed, we are worthy, we are prepared. And if we do it together, we can celebrate ascension. So let's take a deep breath to absorb this Blu-ray transmission. To make wise investments in 2023 that support our own evolution so that we can become the source of individual and collective prosperity. And so may it be, thank you. And thank you, Lorraine, for being dressed in blue today. You're holding the frequency of Almoria. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Gaetana, and your beloved partner, Yantal. Um, the two of you hold such a beautiful space. This is exquisite, really very exquisite. And I just love watching your work, your service evolve on the planet. It is high frequency and those watching can feel that and experience it and also take it out into the world. We're really excited. I'm really excited that we're able to bring this to everyone. I hope that people can feel the frequency of it. And wow, we are here to support all of you in doing this and up-leveling to your service work. 
I'm getting goosebumps as I say it, and we can feel the support from on high as well, and all of the teams leading everyone who's listening to this. So thank you, Loren. So I'm going to turn right back around and offer support to those who are taking this on in their own investment and offer the space to step up and bring their teachings, their unique teachings to quantum conversations, to New Earth One Network. It is the year of community in 2023. Yeah. I feel it. I've heard that from other um, spiritual sources. So it's so wonderful to hear that yeah. this is the theme or the flavor of yeah. the, the current times that we're in. Yeah. And this is one of the training programs that we heard will be balancing the collective frequency and the collective field also, so that we can all serve and live from a certain frequency of consciousness. And we all have a common language, a common you know experience. So this program, apart from all that it will be doing, is also balancing the spiritual collective. So it's very, very important. We can feel it and we feel supported by the great team on high uh, for yeah. all of us in each of us. So, wow. Thank you, Gaetana. This has been another beautiful episode. And again, we invite those watching and listening to join us and to mm -hmm. take part and let's go. It's game on yeah, yeah. and we're doing it. Yeah. Thank you for that. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you.